My name is Frank Kelly. I am from Marshfield, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm here and I want to thank Felix, staff that's here that's doing the camera work, Betts, who also brought me up here, and I want to witness my life story of a book called Short Circuit to God. I am one of 12 children. I am the sixth child of 12. We grew up every day saying the rosary as a family. Every evening we had to come in, the, about, approximately about 6.45, he had the late Richard Cardinal Cushion that would say the, ra say the rosary on the radio. And he sounded like this, in the name of the Father. Now if you picture that, you have 12 children, everybody has three friends, so here you have 60 children in this cold water flat saying a rosary. With mom stating this, Prayer is nothing but God instructing you. That I heard that, that stayed with me. She always said, look at the lives of the saints. Look how they started out. Look how they ended up. They're your role models. I had to go to Mass every morning before the age of seven because the kindergarten went to the public school. Parochial school didn't start to the first grade. So my older brothers were altar boys. They would have the masses early in the morning, and I'd have to go with them. And it'd be just a straight bench in front. And what they would do is they'd pick me up, throw me on the bench, and say, sit there and shut up till the mass is over. You didn't say too much to your older brothers in those days. Well, the beautiful part, as I tell people, is to bring the children to church, even if you're bringing grandchildren, because Every time the gospel is read is the word of God. The word of God is the power of God, and the power of God is love. You have no idea when that's going to pierce your heart, and you'll be open to it. Well, that particular day that I was there was the gospel of Mark, when Jesus was ascended back to heaven, and he said, I'll leave you many signs and wonders. But something, it just touched my heart, and it stayed with me. Well, I said before, Mom would always make one of us talk a little bit about our saint, our namesake, and we had to come up with the saints. Unfortunately, Francis was a lot of them. My brother Kevin I used to be sort of jealous of because we couldn't find him until I took my bicycle over to St. Kevin's Church. Then we found out what St. Kevin did, but this is how it was. it was. It was a wonderful thing every night that we could add to this. Well, here I am when I came home one night, a little couple of years later, and my mom opened this book. It was Life of Padre Peel. As I was listening to my mom reading it, she turned around and I saw that he had these wonderful gifts. Of course, first and foremost, he was a stigmata. And the words of the gospel now came to life to me. I'm listening to what Jesus said. I'll leave you many signs and wonders. I didn't go looking for him. It's just before me. But the thing that stuck with me was that he had this gift of bilocation. He was still alive at the time. He was living over in Italy. And I said, well, nothing's impossible with God. Because mom always said the word faith, F-A-I-T-H, means this, forget about I, thank heaven. So this was a heavenly gift that we saw in front of us in reading this book. So to myself, I said right away, I said, if we ever need him, I'm going to pray to God, the Father, ask him to send him. Wasn't too long after that, maybe a couple of years after that, that my father came down with a heart attack. Back then, if he come down with a heart attack, you usually did not survive. And if you did, it was very likely you weren't going to live too long because they didn't have all the medical that they have today. Well, immediately what I did down, I knelt down, prayed to God, and asked him to send Padre Pio because he had that wonderful gift and, and to send him to Dad, to heal Dad. And second foremost, I knew we needed food. Because see, when Dad wasn't working, there was nothing coming in. So we had to rely on food. So I would pray and ask God also to send food. And of course, I want a brand name food. I didn't want any of that government stuff, you know. Because why not? God says he'll give you the best if you ask. <laughs> you got to ask, see? That's how I always looked at it. Well, the most beautiful part was that evening, after I prayed, that evening, this beautiful priest showed up. He knocked on our door, my mom opened the door, and so and his name was Father William McNamara. He was the head abbot for the Carmelites. 
We didn't even know the Carmelites were in the town. They were a religious order. They weren't a diocesan priest, see? They came in with their habits and things like that. And he came in with another priest and two brothers. And they all walked in, and one of the things they asked for was King Arthur's flower, see? And the reason why, because that was my job. You know, everybody had a job in the family. My job is when Mom ran out of the flower, she just yelled out, Frankie, go up, get the money, go to the store, get King out the flower. Now, you could be in the middle of a no-hitter. You better get the flower because your 11 siblings would have given you last rites because there'd be no breakfast in the morning, <laughs> see? So this is why I asked for a lot of King out the flower. Well, when Father walked in the door, of course, he brought in his brand-name food, and then came King out the flower. Now, he might not have been Padre Peel, but I knew he had plenty to do with it. But my heart told me right away that Dad would be healed. That was more important to me than anything. Just knew it, see? And he turned around, and of course, Dad was healed. He lived 26 years after that heart attack. So 